Listen. Hello and welcome to NBC IGN's Nintendo Podcast. I'm your host, Casey DeFritis, and this week, the week of May 28th, I'm joined by Brian Altano. Hello. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. It's warm. I get to wear shorts and I am excited about that. Seth Macy. <laughs> I don't have a catchphrase worked out for this week, but hello. That wasn't, I didn't have hello. one. I wasn't, I just said, hello, how are you? That's not a catchphrase. That's, that's your famous catchphrase. <laughs> so that Brian Altano shirt in the store. Hello, how are you? That's perfect. And Brendan Graber. Let's see, catchphrase, Wimmy Wham Wazzle. Whoa. That's perfect. A better, right? That's a better, uh, that's a better shirt. Now I'm going to expect you to say that. <laughs> that I can even say that at least three times an episode for that to really catch on as your catchphrase. Mm-hmm. That's, those are the rules. All right. Well, Hello this week, and how are you? Hello. <laughs> I like shorts. Um, this week. <laughs> They're it's, comfy uh, to wear. Splatoon's, they are. It's Splatoon's fifth anniversary. And we'll be also be talking about the release of Minecraft Dungeons, which Sith mm-hmm. Macy reviewed. And also a little bit about Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, because we got that review up on IGN.com as well. And a few other things but hey guys let's start it off with splatoon's fifth anniversary brendan wimmy wham wazzle is not the catchphrase of that game it's, it's not Lumi. it isn't Lumi is a catchphrase so the original splatoon launched on the wii u on may 29th in 2015 um it was revealed I, i'm pretty sure at an e3 what did you guys think yeah. when you first saw it e3 2014 i think i remember yeah. being there. and i remember going like what is this weird <laughs> game about aquatic That's... children paintball on each other yep. i honestly i did not think much of it until that thankfully they had the uh their like global like demos that they like people play in i'm like all right this is actually kind of a, a cool concept and like they turned that whole like family friendly let's not use guns when we can just have paint and ink and it actually made it approachable for all types of players i think mm-hmm. i had no idea it would blow up to what it is today i thought it was uh i guess kind of like gimmicky and i thought it was interesting but i thought it would just be a one-off like oh this is nintendo's answer to a first person shooter or like a third person shooter and it looks fine but it actually ended up being one of the most successful new nintendo ips in recent history like um splatoon 2 launched on the switch on july 2017 and sold 10.13 million units and is actually yeah which is insane it's the eighth best-selling switch game there are a ton there are like splatoon concerts like community is rallied around this game um what do you guys think overall about splatoon what is your favorite like aesthetically i think it's one of the most like impressive and fun games ever made and i think specifically for nintendo it sort of marked this uh, ushering in of like the newer generation of Nintendo developers internally that were uh, young and creative in bold new ways and wanted to do something like certifiably insane in the best way possible. Um, I think that like take like th- it, it really breaks the mold of the Nintendo style guide. Like the Nintendo style guide is generally in terms of like video game protagonists is about saving the world and like cleaning things up, collecting everything. And this is about, I mean, even animal crossing is about like sort of making a tidy home and like Mario, like he finds things, he picks them up, he removes them. There's an entire game where Mario is cleaning, you know, graffiti off of walls, like a cop and (laughs) Splatoon comes around and they're like, destroy everything. It's your, your, the better you wreck this place, the the more points you'll get, the more you'll celebrate it. Uh, like smack people and you know hit hit them with paint and just blow up stuff. Like it's it's so messy and it's so fun and it's so I would say like uh, creatively adventurous from so much of what Nintendo's done, which is awesome because it still fits that uh, perfect sort of like that scale of it. you can play it as a as a kid and you can play it as an adult and you can play it as a novice and you can play it as like a, you know one of the, like a, an actual like professional gamer who wants to win tournaments and stuff like that um yeah it's just it's super super fun i'm so glad that those characters uh, embedded their way into like amiibo and smash brothers and so many other little things like they are now part of the nintendo family forever i feel like nintendo found a really good way with this title to kind of engage their community in a meaningful way 
and having the ability for people to congregate in that lobby and actually like post me versus art all over the place oh, that would man. then show up in your matches and go like, hey, let's like rally the community to go. What would you rather fight about, like pizza or burgers? And have people like draw these impressive things on their Wii U touchscreen and then eventually the Switch. Like it was a way to kind of like have people come together and not just be, you know, in a competitive aspect like, you know, Call of Duty or whatever, where everyone's yelling at each other. Like this is like, it felt a lot more wholesome. Like even mm -hmm. if you were against each other, you still wanted to have fun with each other. Yeah, no, you're totally right. I mean, for for a game that expressive that will let you draw pretty much whatever you wanted and say whatever you wanted through various means of voice chat, like the audience is pretty chill. Like, it, yeah. you know, there's that's it's there's a lot of sort of community there. There's a lot of like I remember like just walking around that lobby gawking at all the the pixel art and stuff that people were making because it's just so incredibly cool. And it's also this was a really like this was a really special game for Wii U because the Wii U um i think i had a very tough time sort of defining itself as a console i mean it it brought us the switch and it brought us a bunch of you know it, it brought us like you know super mario 3d world and uh towards its tail end breath of the wild and stuff like that but in terms of really carving it's um it never got an original zelda game it never got an original animal crossing game um it got mario kart obviously uh, which was then stolen by switch but <laughs> the the, the Splatoon was like one of the like definitive original titles on that system um, outside of something like Nintendo Land that I think that like really showed um, that there was just like a whole new wave of creativity coming from Nintendo. And I'm really glad like that the, the sequel spun out to Switch and it's now it's by all means going to be a franchise like that's a that's a one of the better success uh, successfully selling Nintendo franchises ever. So, yeah, bring on more Splatoon. Yes. I also want to I, say that, oh, sorry, um, just want to quickly point out that their uh, commitment to free updates, like, hugely improved the, the tail life of this game. Mm -hmm. And, like, they're, like, going, like, hey, not only we'll give you, like, new weapon skins, but, like, we'll do new modes, new ranked battles, new maps entirely. Like, there was always a reason to come back to it well after that game had launched. Including, of course, um, we have to talk about Splatfest and, like, how they did such a great I they did a great job at implementing these timed community events. And for example, so we just actually had another Splatfest, the first one in a while. And again, yeah, the last of it, again, it was Mayo versus ketchup. And back in 2017, Mayo won. So I assumed Mayo would win again because it's obviously the superior uh, condiment, but mm -hmm. <laughs> Brendan's giving me, giving me a mm. look, <laughs> but this time ketchup won. Uh, and I think it's, um, I don't know. It, brings conversation outside of the game like even splatoon did a great job at implementing mascots as well which is something that nintendo is just great at right like every single one of their characters even if you've never played its game like you know what that character is mm -hmm. and like to make characters like callie and marie and pearl and marina so iconic that people who don't necessarily play splatoon will still know those characters are kind of knowledgeable of I don't I don't know if I want to call it drama like <laughs> between that, but with the fandom between all the different characters, I think it's really interesting and fun and not a lot of games have pulled that off. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's also it, you know, it's super funky, which I, yeah, I, I was, really I aesthetically this game is like one of the coolest franchises ever. Like the colors mm -hmm. are amazing, the character design is amazing, the sound design is amazing, like every splat is so perfect and like I can hear every weapon like in my head right now and the mm -hmm. music is phenomenal and when you know like the loading screen when i found oh wait if i like push up on the left stick it sort of changes <laughs> the pitch and if i push down on the right stick it sort of changes the tempo so i'm like wow <laughs> just playing around just having a great time in the loading screen with the like this stylish amazing game that my kids are bananas for my son There's is up to issue like eight of the manga or whatever issue oh my god it's a great he loves it this is hilarious there's also like uh, I think it has like a criminally underrated set of uh, single player campaigns, which oh, yeah, um, I think yeah it, it gets kind of swept under the rug. Uh, not surprisingly, because like the the multiplayer is so robust, but I think the um, the single player is is pretty like like a low level Super Mario Galaxy at times. Like it feels like it does some really special, really smart platforming stuff. There's some really interesting boss fights. Uh, I love the style of fashion in this game, like yeah. being able to wear like big, fat, chunky high tops and like a leather jacket and aviators and run around and 
like throw paint everywhere. Like there's 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 like hip hop DJs in the game and like characters that reference Tupac and Biggie. Like <laughs> it's yeah, it's awesome. It's so cool. Yeah, I reviewed the uh, the uh, the Splatoon 2 Octo expansion DLC, and I think it remains one of my favorite DLC packages, even though it was almost all single player. Like the way they structured the the level design, the way you had to traverse the subway system using like this like codec that came out of like Metal Gear Solid Five, and it was so cool like how they like basically had this series of levels and new ideas that never really sh- uh, came up multiplayer. They were all contained within the single player environment of like, hey, what if we had you shoot a, a bowling ball or an eight ball across like this billiard thing, and then use that like not to get destroyed. So I just want to take a second to reminisce a little bit. So my first E3 with IGN, my very first E3 appointment was actually with Splatoon 2 with Brendan and Miranda. I remember that. Yeah. And we went there to cover and check out Salmon Run, the new PvE mode in Splatoon 2. And I remember it being actually like quite challenging. I think... We may or may not have done great. I think we did okay. <laughs> and it was all thanks That's to Brendan. Great. Brendan carried us. I, I remember I was, that. Like, screaming the entire time, though. <laughs> we were all screaming, but it was a great time. That was actually the first preview I ever wrote for IGN as well. It was Splatoon Aww. 2. So thanks, Splatoon. <laughs> That's like the first big uh, Nintendo review I ever did was for Splatoon 2. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. I think so Splatoon I... feather to put oh. in your cat. What? <laughs> so it's a good feather to put in your cat. Yeah. yeah. Splatoon 2 review. Please take I thought you said. I thought you said cat. I was like, I did too. Weird. I was like, yeah, my cat likes feathers. <laughs> what? There is a, there is a Not, pretty cool cat in that game. Don't put a feather in, in a cat. No, please don't put a feather in a cat. In, Nine out of ten veterinarians her, recommend against <laughs> your cat. I was thinking like in, in the mouth, like <laughs> she likes to chew on feathers. Or when they eat a chicken and then they just yeah, and then like feathers like, yeah, and then it opens their mouth inside because it's actually a chicken hawk. <laughs> That, no. that classic that classic moment when you feed your cat its first whole chicken <laughs> <laughs> that still has feathers on. <laughs> so my t- tangent tangent time my um when I first got my cat she still went outside because she was a street cat when we first got her mm-hmm. and I came home one day and I went upstairs and there were just feathers everywhere <laughs> just everywhere all over the floor in the bedroom, in the hallway, leading up the stairs, feathers all over the place. No bird carcass, no blood. Just feathers. I don't know how she accomplished that, but I commend her for not making me clean up a, a bird carcass. Wow. But also after that, we gave her a collar with a bell so she could no longer surprise birds. <laughs> 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 so, so anyway, uh, that's my cat and feather story tangent. But um, anyway, back to... <laughs> Back to Splatoon. Where do you think the franchise can go from here, and what improvements do you still want to see? I got a crazy idea. Check do it. Out. Splatoon three. Boom. No, <laughs> it would not in this lifetime. No one saw that one coming. <laughs> I do like how, uh, as the, the the single player story has progressed, like in Splatoon one, you were agent like three or four, and you found out that Callie Marie were agent one and two, and then Splatoon two, you had to find the whoever lost the last Splatfest. I believe that's how they figured out who was going to be the missing person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you recruited the um, Pearl Marina to help you. And then there was the Octo expansion where you fought the mind-controlled Agent 4. So I'd love to see the next one have even more callbacks to the previous two games. And maybe something happens to Marina and Pearl where you're now having to find them or expand upon that adventure series of like, these callbacks to previous characters. And I would also really like to see them actually take some of the ideas that they've only had in single player and put them in multiplayer maps. Because like having like the rails or like these crazy platforming things would be kind of cool to see in more of the forefront and actually making your team figure out how to traverse areas as well as ink everything. Mm -hmm. And just as a reminder, Pearl won the Splatfest of Pearl versus Marina. So if we do see a Splatoon 3, I assume that we'll have Pearl will be more prominent. Marina is the, is the bad person now. Yeah. Can I give my serious answer? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mario <laughs> versus Rabbids, but with Splatoon. Like that kind of An game. XCOM with Splatoon? Yeah. Oh, I like, like that. Odd-based tactical Splatoon game. With Rabbids? 
rabbits and Splatoon. Why not? Throw them in there. <laughs> Splatoon and rabbits. Yeah, there it is. Uh, I don't. I mean, I, I, if if I hadn't seen Mario vs. Rabbits, I said that would never work. But then I saw that game and played. It. I was like, okay, never Great, mind. Like, it's been fun. Yeah, yeah. I've been proven wrong. And I, I also just wanted to take one more second to mention when I went to the Nintendo Live event last fall, there was a Splatoon concert, and I know I, I talked about it quite a bit on that episode but uh, for all of you splatoon fans even if you're not a splatoon fan you guys should go look up that recording because it was wild it was like a what is holograph is that the correct i want to say like Mm -hmm. hologram hologram is like holographic pokemon card it's not the same thing hologram um i want to see hatsune miku in splatoon 3 and is it is it great music was played by live real squids (laughs) <laughs> which i thought real was life very, squid it's very bold the whole thing spray under- ink over the entire audience it was a mix between guar and gallagher and they then they were turned into- the microphone that's no. how they get the noises <laughs> and uh then they were turned into calamari after mm. seth please go photoshop calamari. guar, guar- <laughs> <laughs> alligator <laughs> but um besides the voice the- recordings it was a live band and it was very cool. And it was very fun to see people of all ages in the crowd be getting hyped up. To Sounds Splatoon like music. the funnest thing. Cool. Yeah. Like, oh, dude, Evan Flow is still one of my favorite jams from Splatoon. It was a, it had some it was really a good track. Good time. I had, it, it was a back. great time. So, thank you guys for reminiscing about Splatoon with me for its fifth anniversary. Crazy. I, I know. And I have this uh, spot here for topic two in our. Uh, um, run a show but there is no topic two so we're gonna move right on to, s- to small news because there's not a whole lot going on this week <laughs> so first up in small news like i said multiple weeks ago how every week we're gonna report on something that's being canceled because of covid this week's event is blizzcon mm-hmm. um i don't know why i'm laughing it's not funny i'm sorry um blizzcon has been canceled and, and an online event has been planned for 2021 uh why 2021 uh, they said because of logistics and different factors involved and um because of that any blizzcon online alternative will most likely be sometime early next year in 2021 uh so yeah i guess look out for more information on the online portion of that i'm i'm really interested to see how all of these different events are going to how they're going to transfer to online like what do you guys think like it's how are they probably gonna do it? for the best sometimes like they're like instead of having to try to like make up something on the spot when you might not even have a lot of info to give out like they're, they're gonna go on stage again and say oh guess what diablo is still in development still can't see it yet like i think it's uh-huh. the same thing for nintendo is like don't come out and say when you don't have anything to show so yeah. if nintendo doesn't have an e3 presence this year or lack of e3 presence that's fine like if they have nothing to say why not there's no reason to make up an event just to like have filler Mm-hmm. Right. I think that all these uh these companies that are canceling, you know, the like the E3 demos that they're gonna have, just like let people play those. Just release them onto the eShop or whatever, or the BlizzCon shop. Blizz yeah, shop. even even if they're uh if they're timed, you know, mm-hmm. like if if you remember what like Nintendo did on 3DS, which is kind of annoying as a as a, like a collector, uh, but they let you download demos and they would have like you can only play them like 30 times or 20 times or something like that um so if they did sort of like a timed demo drop uh if blizzard was porting something cool to switch and they're like you can play it this afternoon like pretend you're at e3 and then it goes away Stand in line. <laughs> yeah i yeah. mean back to our previous topic the one of the big successes of splatoon was the global test fire is mm-hmm. how people right. play that early and go like wow this game actually does have some cool concepts that would be I think the best and I'm, I'm wondering if they want it to have a level of exclusivity and not let liter- literally everyone play these demos they want just a small portion and i wonder if they could do that by sending out like email links to people who have nintendo accounts with email set up and then having like the first i don't know two thousand people that click on this link will get a code to access a demo or yeah. something like that so like in- increase selling those um like online tickets for years because when i was <laughs> yeah for news like i would get one of those tickets so that I could cover, you know, it's like I watched the event, like just give, you know, a 15 minute demo of Diablo four or whatever on switch mm-hmm. to everyone who paid the $35 or whatever. Oh yeah. I really like you that. Know, I'm um, not a businessman, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I'm like, I've, I've been tracking a, a, the, a, the way a lot of these sort of independent film festivals have been doing stuff like this. And 
they've been doing really cool things where they'll basically charge you like a day ticket or a weekend ticket, which gives you kind of endless access to all the stuff they have on the site. And you have to go through the sort of like uh, a specific player that they have. Uh, it's like a proprietary system. Real player. Um, yeah, it's real player. Welcome back, real player. We've, we've missed that you. In the grave. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have no idea if real, real player is dead or not. It's probably still alive. Um, but yeah, it's, I think that that would be a really good solution for it. It's to sort of like have panels and, uh, Q and A's and then drop demos and let people who paid for ticket access to get in, uh, have that too. Also give them a, you know, an exclusive key that gets them into the online merchandise store if they want to buy stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, like frankly, doing like pets in a while, like just give them a cool pet. Yeah, I mean, frankly, this is something I wish Nintendo did all year round. Like, uh, like I, I love Nintendo merchandise, and I love uh, like Nintendo's E three presence. And it would be really cool if they said, "Well, this is what we were gonna do at PAX," and it said, "We're gonna do this over here." And you know, if for anybody who signs up, you get this swag, and we'll mail it to you, or it's printable, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I, I, the question is not, to me isn't really like how are these companies going to figure out a digital solution to this it's will they ever go back to like these big conventions like i don't I have my little smash badge yeah I those are great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, i wonder what all of these companies going to do with the merch that they had planned like i don't like i was talking to brian earlier but like this pillow back here like we assume that was something that ign had ordered for um as merch for E3, so now yeah. they just send it to us to at least have some use, right? So yeah, I wonder I mean, what. I, all... I think it was set dressing for like our E3 live shows and yeah, uh, and stage shows on the E3 floor, and um, so yeah, I don't know if they're gonna mail you a couch, maybe some microphone. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wonder, I wonder what all the other companies are going to do with the merch that that they had ordered specifically for these event shows if they're going to be, be available online have, like, the leftover e3 2020 shirts they give it e3 2021 <laughs> just like, just like well, everyone well, just crosses it out and adds a well one. like some some companies are like kind of handling it better than others like i was at a supermarket the other day and there was just tons of uh like wonder woman 1984 or whatever like <laughs> chips doritos. yeah doritos and it's just like well that movie's not coming out this summer but like uh. I'm, Doritos are still good, I guess. So yeah. Those out there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of, um, you know, that like that alternate dimension when, uh, when like two teams go head to head in the Super Bowl, and there's a bunch of guys in the parking lot that get T-shirts printed up, and then like one side always says like they won, but they didn't, uh, and then they uh, mail those with, with elections, yeah, and they just yeah. Like they dump the extra shirts like in a ditch somewhere. Exactly, exactly. Or they mail them to like, uh, you know, people in need. And, I, I would hope so. I would yeah. hope that they donate. That's, that's, that's a better place to put them. Yeah. Please donate your shirts that say 2020 is an awesome year to someone who can use it. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe they can put the, you know, I survived Nintendo's Super Mario E3 booth 2020 t-shirt <laughs> on like an online store somewhere and let us buy it because that would be a fun relic. That would be. <laughs> So yeah, I guess we'll just have to we'll just find out what everyone's doing for their online events when they happen. But thank you for those speculations. And also, real quick, I just wanted to mention that on Tuesday of this week, there's a thing called the Wholesome Direct put out by the Wholesome Direct uh, Collective, um, or just the Wholesome Collective rather. And it was an indie game showcase with 50 plus games. It was only f almost 40 minutes long. And I know not all of these games are confirmed to be coming to Switch, and some aren't even set to be released until sometime next year, but Seeing as how so many indie Steam games are coming to Switch, I assume a lot of these games will also come to Switch. And we do have some confirmed names like Spirit Fair, which we saw yeah. at E3 last year, was also shown in this direct, as well as like Ooblets and a bunch of other games that look, I don't know, really wholesome. So I enjoyed watching it. If you want to watch a nice wholesome video about video games, I recommend it. Same. I definitely recommend that that whole video. I previewed Spirit Fair at last E3. And I really liked what I played so far. So I can't wait to see what they do with making that game have a really cool look at what it's like to let go of someone and like look at death in like a, a nice, a very comforting way instead of the way that we all kind of like are depressed about. Like it's just a very beautiful game. Yay. 
I'm I'm yeah. excited for that one. I don't know why I said yay. <laughs> you can give hugs to everybody in that game. There's a dedicated <laughs> hug button. There you go. That's a yay right there. That's a yay. It's a yay yeah. game. Yay. Yay hugs. <clears throat> um and also in small news, uh the Dead Cells, there's another free live update for Dead Cells, and it's a bestiary update, and it comes with new enemies, two new items, a crowbar, and an I, I, this is a portable door. It meant I meant to say portal door. Speech to text, I guess, ah. doesn't understand what a portal. I was looking at affordable doors on. Home yeah, not, not an affordable, <laughs> door. affordable a portal, doors. a portal door, um, a portable, a portable door, portal door. I think portal door, and a lot more. <laughs> so if you are like dead cells, there's a free update, and you should probably go play it. If you like affordable doors, you should look elsewhere. Affordable, affordable doors. I feel like we're going to open a portal of affordable doors if we keep saying these words in combination. All right, let's move on. That was all the small news for this week. And let's talk about games out this week, including the important stuff, as Seth Macy has pointed out, Minecraft Dungeons out on the 26th for only $20. Yeah, great bargain. Seth- uh, that's a That's a must buy. That's a very fun game. I gave it a 7 out of 10. Uh, it doesn't really do anything spectacularly different in fact it plays it very safe which you know it's kind of a bummer but it's also you know i i think my subhead was uh dungeon crawler 101 like fisher price my first diablo basically like it's mm-hmm. fun it's it's not hard to understand uh great multiplayer and it looks gorgeous and the music is fantastic and it's just minecraft it's you know it's it's if you barrel through the story it's not very long but if you take your time look for some loot yeah there's there's some meat on on, on them bones it sounds That's like really, this would be really good to hear yeah, it sounds like this would be a good first dungeon crawler to play with like your kids or something. Or yeah, someone I actually, who's... yeah, I actually played it with my oldest son, and he would have given it a nine out of ten. Whoa, okay. <laughs> he doesn't work for IGN. He didn't even do a <laughs> job. Well, it sounds like the check cleared, Seth. <laughs> <laughs> the Fisher Price fun bucks. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm I'm totally down to play that. I was uh, I was. It's it's free on Xbox Game Pass, but I was actually just going to buy it on on Switch just because I, I'm stupid with money, and I feel like I that that game feels like it might just feel more right at home with my pro controllers. Yeah, I mean Diablo three on I've said it a million times on Switch is like the funnest way to play it. I think mm-hmm. so. This is definitely a good candidate for Switch, and also in the future they're going to implement crossplay. They don't have it now, but they've said that they were oh cool. On it. So yeah. So I feel like yeah. dungeon crawlers don't get en- enough love. There's not enough of them, and so having well, more in that field is great. I think Ten it's years, just like the they're gonna play it, be like, "Oh, I remember that. That's what got me started on my love." I think it's just because there are already games out that already do it so well, like Diablo three and uh, what was yeah. the other one, Path of Exile. Right. I but mean, this, that's free, this can... and they're both. Torchlight two is also really yeah. fun. They're all fun. I mean, who doesn't like a good co op game where you get loot and get to be like? Uh, and instant gratification every time you open a chest, right? And get a cool sword. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's just such an integral part of gameplay and is such a great, satisfying loop. Oh, yeah. I have a crossbow <laughs> with the orange, which is the highest rarity level. It shoots out five, but then I have an enchantment where there's a random chance that each arrow will shoot five arrows out also. But it also has an enchantment where it sometimes will pass through enemies. So it's just like, it's brutal. It's that's great. what I like to hear. <laughs> you can, like, a multiplying up, piercing like, arrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feels good. Yeah, so I, I have a, I have a question about Minecraft Dungeons. How does the co-op work? Uh, it's online or local. Oh, great. So yep. if you play local, can you each have different characters and play by yourselves, or is it in one game state? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't actually know the answer. To. Okay. The thing is, the characters they don't matter. There's no okay. different in classes. There's no, it's just skins. It's just completely okay. cosmetic differences. It's, you know, your gear and equipment is sort of how you customize your characters, but there's no set classes or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I guess I'm wondering if you can just like, or, or, can you just like play and then maybe like you're six hours in and have someone drop in and be like, here's a bunch of my crap. Please put the crap on yourself. <laughs> it's pronounced Minecraft. Actually, <laughs> I don't believe that's possible because the only way you can get rid of items is by salvaging them, which okay. you know, they turns it into gems and whatever enchantment it has, you get those enchantment points back, which is nice. There's no like penalty for salvaging mm-hmm. something. You don't lose like an enchantment point. You get all your enchantment points back, which okay. is great if you have like 17 enchantments on yeah. one. Yeah, that's very forgiving. So- yeah, Seth, I was going to buy this right now. It's nineteen ninety nine, but I noticed there's also a hero pass for nine ninety nine. 
Why wasn't that I part of your review? Because uh, <laughs> the Hero Pass is not out yet. Why didn't you review the Hero Pass that isn't out yet? <laughs> <laughs> How can I trust you as a journalist is what I'm getting to the bottom of I don't have to stand up, up for these questions. My review is my opinion, and that is final. And you don't have to stand up at all. We're all sitting. I won't stand up because I'm wearing sweatpants and it doesn't match my college shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very conscious about this. Story. All right. I'm going to buy the game now because I really want like a, a fun local co-op. It's fun. Uh, I think like your little girl watching it, she'll just be like, oh, because there's like so many cool, fun, exciting, satisfying things happening. Like even the, mm-hmm. the sounds of finding stuff is just like the sound design is excellent as well. No, I'm totally into it. So we were just talking about Minecraft Dungeons, which Seth gave a 7 out of 10, which is good. Uh, he mm-hmm. says his son would have given it a 9 out of 10, but he doesn't work here, so don't listen to him. <laughs> nope. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, well, course, after that, course, after course, that review that Seth just botched. <laughs> <laughs> or a second opinion. A second opinion. <laughs> second opinion from my good, good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Also coming out this week is Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition out on the 29th for 60 bucks. This is what a lot of you have been waiting for and a lot of us have been waiting for. I know a lot of people like Seth and Zach and some other people in the office are going to be playing a lot of this game over the next week. So we're saving our um, a bigger discussion about this game for next week. But I just wanted to briefly mention that our review is up and uh, Tra- Travis Northup gave it an 8 out of 10. And he says Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition is the remaster that this respected JRPG deserves, even when it feels like it doesn't go far enough in places. Eight years later, some of its customization systems and an overly grindy structure certainly haven't aged well, but its story and combat are just as great as ever. The new future-connected story chapter isn't particularly inspired, but the impressive graphical overhaul and welcome, if small, quality of life improvements make the best version of Xenoblade Chronicles we've ever had. Oh my god, I'm so excited. You guys stoked? He's, he's complaining about grinding. I'm like, oh, I love, I love grinding. Yeah, um, what, I, yeah I feel like the GRPGs, they kind of uh, they age very strangely depending on your tastes. Where if you love the old systems, then having like a remake or a remaster of that is just like, oh, that's more of what I want. Yeah. But some people want that quality of life. Like, no, give me like a variable uh, and grindy rate. So mm-hmm. I, I do like how everyone finds something different to love in these JRPGs that evolve over time. Yeah, I noticed um, there was some discussion about this score versus scores we've given the previous versions of the game. Mm-hmm. And so I should probably point out that uh, our review rubric is is slightly different this time around. We are basically just going with solid numbers. So if something got an 8.3 and this got an 8, there's actually no way of knowing if this 8 is secretly an 8.3 or an 8.8 yeah. or an 8.5. Mm-hmm. Is it a just, great or is it a great? It's just hanging out in the 8. The eight zone somewhere within those the, the walls of that large numerical universe. So, I think, yeah, uh, I want to say it's safe to assume, but it probably isn't. But if something was previously given like an 8.4, it probably would have give, been given an eight. But if something was given like an 8.9, it probably would have just been given a nine, potentially, but potentially because maybe because Dan, I think, says, Oh, it's an 8.9, it's an eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so always been like, who knows it's about the, the the letter the the word association rather than the yeah. number so mm-hmm. a great yes. point nine still a great yeah. yeah like a lot of times i'll send a review into dan for edits with a score and he'll be like i read your review and this actually sounds more like an eight by w- like the words that you're using to describe mm-hmm. this that yeah. game sounds great it doesn't sound like it's amazing and then mm-hmm. i'll back and i read i'm like god dan's right <laughs> wow, i can't believe i hate god this damn it how does this guy just one oh, wait, one more wait. reason why why your son should take your job, Seth? <laughs> Pile him up. He <laughs> actually spent now, like man. his free time learning Premiere Pro, so I'm doomed. Like, oh yeah, you're have way more skills. Oh man. Than that. Um, when you're done, when you guys are eating dinner tonight, tell tell him Brian from IGN, big fan. Uh, we're we're ready to hire him as soon as your father wants to stop <laughs> working. He'll send you his like real probably. <laughs> I am. So- I have another friend whose son is around 16 and he also is editing. He also edits videos. There are so many teenagers who are just like doing YouTube videos now and are getting really good at it. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Why wasn't I so, I don't know. We had so much work ethic. My wife works with kids like in like first, second grade and they're doing the, you know, at home stuff with students. So they're using like zoom. And I'm like, at that age, I barely knew what the internet was like. 
and they're like, no, yeah, I'm on, I'm on Zoom. Don't worry, I got the, the settings all like Max. I'm like, how old are you? What? <laughs> when I was a kid, was we I, used to make video I don't think so. On on our like a VHS shoulder mounted camera, and you would film them chronologically because there was no way to edit them. Like nobody <laughs> had two VCRs you could hook up and switch them, swap them out, and everything. <laughs> so yeah, real real low quality stuff. Oh, the man. show just got way way old. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's me. fine. That's us. Oldest person. Kids today alive. are doing computer stuff. It's <laughs> crazy. How do they even get online? <laughs> Always on their screens. My grandson helps me All with right. my Wi-Fi and my e-worm. All right, look, my original comment wasn't about the fact that they're using computers, but the fact that they're, they're doing the work to learn a skill on their own accord and produce things that they make, mm -hmm. which I guess... Because there might be money at the end of that tunnel. That's why. Yeah, that's, that, true. that's cool. That's awesome. That's great. That's so awesome. I try to remind them. I'm like, this is a desirable job that you should be definitely leaning into. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's cool. Yeah. Um. Also out this week are all of the 2K games out on the 29th all of May. Them. All Every of them. One. Well, a, a few, quite a few. We've got XCOM mm -hmm. 2 collection for 50 bucks, which includes XCOM 2, the War of the Chosen extension, and all DLC. Any XCOM fa fans? It's like Mario plus Rabbids, but there's aliens. Cool. <laughs> Sounds great. I'm sold. So if you like Mario plus Rabbids, but like the grittier tone of aliens, XCOM 2. I'm sorry, I haven't played this. I know it's one of Dan Stapleton's like favorite games of yeah, all time. If you, if you love probability and having a 90% chance to hit and then missing and having your guy go crazy, run into a fire and die. <laughs> like, Yeah. Kind of like what? Fire Emblem in that way. Okay. Sounds, sounds Fire Emblem, but with aliens. No. Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, also out this week is Bioshock the Collection, which includes Bioshock, Bioshock 2, and Bioshock Infinite, and all of the single-player DLC. 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 Uh, all of these are in available individually for 20 bucks each. Bioshock's great. It is a very good game. I know Miranda Sanchez is actually streaming Bioshock currently. Not, like, currently as I'm speaking, but, like, within these past couple of weeks currently... <laughs> It's uh, like Mario plus Rabbids, but this is the giant one in a suit. <laughs> and there's the guy saying, would you kindly? And the Mario has a wrench and he beats someone up with it. It's like XCOM, but everybody's drowning and on drugs. <laughs> that sounds uh, like I'm, my kind of time. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'll take it. Uh, I'm actually weirdly fascinated at uh, how Bioshock Infinite runs on Switch. I like. I totally oh, I understand. Know. The first Bioshock's like 15 years old at this point. So like that makes sense to me. But um Bioshock Infinite was a like pretty heavy duty game, and so it was an impressive PS3 game. Mm -hmm. I That's mean, fair. there's there's definitely like there's like some not so great textures in there, uh, namely like the 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 pineapples. <laughs> there's like a bunch of like fr crates of fruit that are basically just like a flat object. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's. Yeah, that's that's like a big meaty game with a lot going on, um, and so I'm fascinated to see how it runs on Switch. And yeah, actually, I actually mean, get a Switcher and and Doom on and, a mm -hmm. Switch. I have I have high hopes. Yeah, and actually, I actually really liked. I mean, of course, everyone likes Bioshock, but I really liked Bioshock Infinite. I I haven't finished a lot of single player shooters, and this is this is one of them. But I thought it was just really interesting to me. It was fun. It's a good time. Uh, and also. Coming out this week is a bunch of Borderlands, like all of the Borderlands for the Switch. Borderlands Game of the Year Edition for 30 bucks, which includes the first game and all DLC. Borderlands The Handsome Collection for $40, which includes Borderlands 2, the pre-sequel, and most DLC. And then Borderlands Legendary Collection for $50, which includes all of the above, but isn't available digitally, so you have to order the physical Yeah, which copy. is weird. I was looking all over. Tom was like, is this not available digitally? Yeah. And so I went on the hunt. Yeah, I couldn't find it available anywhere, which is kind of strange. But that I would go weird. with the legendary collection, personally. Especially, I mean, yeah, you can't get it digitally, but who cares? Collecting it's more cost effective. Yeah, yeah. You get a little, you get a cool little Borderlands cartridge, and all the Borderlands are in there. It's unbelievable. And I, if you guys don't know, Borderlands <laughs> is a co-op looter shooter, and it is a lot of fun. I don't it's know. I've always had a lot of fun. Base, and it has the same kind of humor. <laughs> Borderlands oh 2 goodness. is like one of my favorite games of all time. Like I played so many hours of that with my friends. We would squat up and just play. And no, uh, same. I when Borderlands Two came out, we did. We had like a LAN party set up in my like tiny college apartment with like three different TVs and a bunch of people hanging out playing Borderlands. All my friends switched to another platform. I was very sad. 
Oh, sucks. I'm sorry. I still played it eventually. That was a moment yeah. of silence. <laughs> <laughs> We're all pressing F first. Uh, These trying times. No, I definitely highly recommend Borderlands, especially if you've never played it before, and especially if you have friends to play it with. I yep. think I was so drawn to it because it also has like it's like a shooter with RPG elements. Yep. Yeah. Borderlands has been out forever. You should know about it. Yeah, go play it. It's on the Switch now. Games, and then on a tangent, go play Tales from the Borderlands by Telltale because that is also a really also good very good. Mm-hmm. There are a few smaller games coming out, but I'm just going to very quickly run through them. There's Bug Fables Everlasting Sapling, which is an indie turn-based RPG. Uh, Shantae and the Seven Sirens, uh, the fifth Shantae game, a platformer series developed by WayForward. Atomacrops, which is a strange post-apocalyptic mix between Stardew Valley and Enter the Gungeon. Okay. Play a farm mutant crops while defending them from monsters and spend your profits on upgrades and defensive. Tom oh. likes this one a lot. By the way, Tom Marks, thank you again so much for the descriptions for all of these smaller games that you recommend. And this one is uh, from this one is Turmoil, which is a great game from 2016 about dr- drilling for oil and growing your oil empire. Oh, hell yeah. There will be blood the game. Yeah, Tom <laughs> likes this one too. Thank you, I'm Tom. Actually- I'm really excited to dig into Bug Fables. It's um, very Paper Mario-y. I started it on uh, Steam, and I think I want to get it on Switch. Just play it on the couch. Yeah, it says it has 800 reviews on Steam, and it's 98% positive, which is crazy. So a lot of people like that game a lot. And the only two people are ones that are afraid of bugs. (laughs) It's actually one guy hates the concept of fables in general. (laughs) He's very literal. Do you think we could get Blathers to play that game? Uh, (laughs) <laughs> anyway those are all of the games out this week we talked about uh minecraft dungeons and Blade chronicles definitive edition all of the 2k games including xcom bioshock and borderlands and the smaller picks were bug fables shantae atomicrops and turmoil please forgive me for abbreviating those tiles <laughs> let's talk about games that we're actually playing this week brian why don't you go first uh I actually jumped back into Animal Crossing because I'm uh, doing a very special thing with IGN where we are basically um, shooting kind of like a MTV Cribs version of Animal Crossing where I am visiting uh, celebrities and notable people's towns and they are showing off their island and giving me tours. And so uh, we'll have more to share on that soon. But it's been super, super fun so far. I'm so excited for that. I love that. It's really, really cool. Can, um, can, can you spoil any any of the people who you're visiting? Uh, let's see. Um, Cliff Blazinski, Shannon Woodward, who is on uh, Westworld. Um, we are going to see Gary Witta, obviously. Uh, some old friends of IGN, Naomi Kyle, Alana Pierce, Jessica nice. Chobot. Um, nice. Yeah, we actually we put together a whole, a whole um, press release on this that we published on the site yesterday, along with the first wave of our, our rollout for announcements for uh, IGN Summer of Gaming, which will hopefully, you know, help to fill the E3 shaped hole in your heart, which is a weird shape for a hole in your heart. <laughs> but all of them really would be a weird shape because it's bad. Um, so, yeah, uh, well, we're basically going to turn this into like a big charity live stream and uh, raise a bunch of money for uh, COVID relief. And uh, so definitely check that out. It's going to be super, super fun. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. Seth, what about you? What are you playing? I played Minecraft Dungeons, but I didn't play it on Switch. Of course. So it doesn't count. Hi. Well, it's on Switch. That's fine. That's you true. can lie like you did in your review. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some people will take you seriously, Brian. Be careful. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> people were kind of a sign. little bummed out. They were saying that I didn't sound very enthusiastic in my video, which is the opposite of how I sound in every video. I'm always like, this is a game that I found that was lacking a little bit. Minecraft Dungeons is an exquisite game. masterpiece, and I would give it an 8 out of 10. Yeah. Minecraft Dungeons is a game. Mm-hmm. I did graphic. it. I did. That's my objective review. Um, Brendan, what are you playing this week? Uh, work-wise, I'm still digging some Animal Crossing stuff, and I just finished doing a guide for Maneater. It's coming to Switch Ooh. soon. It's that Shark, Shark Boy game where you... Yeah. Ooh, and then, I've been uh, playing a ton of that game. I can't. I uh, I cannot wait for that to come to Switch. Yeah, honestly. it's it's That's a good it's a good Switch game. I think it's yeah, like a very it's like a 2008 era open world kind of type <laughs> thing. We go to region region. You just chop on people, get collectibles, that fun stuff. It's very like it's like gaming comfort food. 
Yeah, Jared Petty described it as sort of like an underwater crackdown, and I yeah. think that's so perfect. Uh, it's even got like a cartoonish over the top announcer um, in in the way of Chris yeah, Parnell from SNL. Yeah. yeah, I thought it's, it reminded me in like the weirdest way. It reminded me of like a very polished goat simulator. Yeah, yeah. that sounds. Yeah, awesome. that you're playing, and they have these collectible landmarks you can find. And every time you hit one, he'll like comment on them. And there are some like really funny Easter eggs they've hidden. Um, I won't spoil any of them, but like the remarks he makes when you find some of them are just like you do a double take. And you're like, wait, is this referencing this? Like, oh, my God, this mm -hmm. is hilarious. Um, and yeah, then that's really good. Time, uh, when I'm not working on game stuff, uh, my friends and I have been playing uh, Golf With Your Friends, which just finally had a early access. Uh, it's really, really fun. Like a. Uh, Putt simulator, but yeah. crazy, crazy maps. Yeah, they we just, talked about think, it a lot last week. Yeah, they just released the, uh, um, what was it? There's an indie game that's in a jail, and I'm blanking on the name. Prison Heart Escapists. Oh, I think the, escapist. there's like an escapist map, uh, which is really clever. Uh, and then a bit of a uh, Fallout 76 on the side. I've fell back into that hole. I'll get out soon. Don't worry. Uh, okay. Well, guys, thanks for telling me what games you're playing this week. Uh, I'm I'm playing the try to use your hands as least often as possible game and playing DDR. So thanks, DDR, for existing. And I'm still salty that they stopped making those games. Yeah. I want DDR on the Switch, and I want a mat on the Switch so I can play. Uh, Just don't the, step on the, on the subway. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll bring my mat. Bam, this is my spot. No, I want I want to play the... Um, Oh my gosh, I'm completely blanking. blinking. The Legend of Zelda. The... Oh, Kate of Hyrule? Yes. Oh, yeah. I want to play cool, that yeah. with an actual dance mat. That would be oh, my yeah. number one thing that I want right now. Has anyone rigged that up? I'm sure someone has, but. Yeah, if people are playing like Dark Souls on a banana, like, come on. You, you, they can do whatever they want. Like, you can do it. I'm just, I'm that just that not way. that technically inclined. 2020, do whatever you want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And now let's move on to question block. I think we can squeeze in at least one question. Let's get it started. This one is from Marshall Gorduk. He says, my name is Marshall Gorduk and I'm a proud and I'm proud to have autism as a Mo Metroid. Well, I can't talk as a Metroid autistic fan. I would love Metroid to expand like never before. I believe if Metroid has a future, the series has to evolve beyond isolation, exploration, dystopia. I would love Metroid to broaden itself with characters, voice acting, ancient races, kind of like Mass Effect, galaxies, RPG, multiplayer, etc. If Zelda, Pokemon, and Fire Emblem can do it, why not Metroid? Would you be okay with this to revitalize a franchise? Not so much Star Wars, but more like Mass Effect. Why do you want Metroid Prime games on Nintendo Switch? I would like to see them on Switch, but I'm nervous, worried, anxious, cautious, and scared that nobody cares. I don't think you understand that Metroid isn't Animal Crossing, Fire Emblem, or Splatoon when it comes to sales and broadening audience. If Prime Trilogy, Samus Returns, and others didn't sell well because of complexity and not being family friendly and not being accessible to younger generations, how in the world will this be any different? And you know what, Marshall? You're not wrong. Metroid has not been selling that well over the past couple of years. Metroid Prime is the best selling Metroid game, came out in 2002 and sold 2.8 million units. Um, but that's kind of interesting because the GameCube was Nintendo's worst performing system. So its yeah. best performing game was on the worst performing system. Outside uh, of the Wii U. Yes. Yeah. yeah outside of the Wii U. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, and a um, virtual boy, but. Yeah. Well, <laughs> does that even count? But um, no. <laughs> what do you What do you guys think? Um, I think his concerns are definitely valid. Uh, I think it, it's it's sort of. I think you nailed it, Casey. Like the best selling Metroid game was on Nintendo's worst selling console, and you look at the way stuff has been selling historically on Switch, which is a, a system that has already what doubled, tripled the amount of sales that the GameCube did globally. Like it's crushing it. Um, yeah that that's a perfect place to reintroduce that franchise uh and secondly i think for like the posterity posterity of the sort of historical uh element of it it's nice to give a game or a series of games like that uh new life on a system that's contemporary that a lot of people have hooked up that they're playing every single day you would potentially expose an entire new audience of people to the Metroid franchise for the very first time, uh, people who have maybe only met those characters through something like Smash Brothers. Yeah. And so, like, I think that'd be super, super cool. Um, and, you know, if, if kids and, and babies don't want to play it, then then us 
big strong people play it. Yes, right. tough, uh, tough yeah. guys and girls. Go back. I'm not worried about Metroid being too complex <laughs> because we've seen complex games work well on their own before, even on a Nintendo console. Um, it is also interesting that the the best selling Metroid games are the ones that weren't made uh, by Nintendo Japan. They were by Rare. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, retro. Retro. It's mixed up. Mm-hmm. Um, and even when uh, Sakamoto, the Metroid creator, came back and made Other M, it didn't do well because I think, and partly because they actually tried to expand too much. They gave voice acting. They gave Samus a weird backstory, and people didn't really resonate with that too much. Yeah. Um, I, I do feel like Metroid's core tenets about isolation exploration are good. I think you could expand those into a broader thing. Like by Metro Prime 3, we had multiple plans to go between, and that was a pretty cool evolution of that. Um, but I don't know if it needs the the Mass Effect treatment so much, but I would like to see that whole, that universe expand not necessarily with Samus going and saying like, hey guys, let's all be a team. Like you can still get your missions and go into a new area by yourself, but knowing that there's people like out there in the universe talking with you might be a compromise. Hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah. fine with it. Just staying the same. You know? <laughs> <laughs> just give me the same thing that I like and I know that I like, but the, for me, the draw of Metroid is uh, it, it is the exploration. It is the isolation. And it's kind of like, I don't, really need to know the motivations of why Samus is a bounty hunter in outer space. Like that seems pretty, I'm fine with sort of filling those blanks in. I think it's the reason that I never really liked the prequels because the story that I had invented for Darth Vader was much better than the story <laughs> that George Lucas told, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I don't necessarily need to have it explained to me. That being said, if they said that there's a new Metroid like RPG that's coming out, you know, next year or whatever, I would be all over it. Like I would I like I just love when they do something unexpected with something familiar. Like that's my favorite thing where I can't wrap my head around, you know, easily what this could be. Boom. Just like I I, I have the faith that they'll do could do right by it if they were to announce something like that or like, you you know. Metroid Kart, there we go, boom. As a quick aside, though, like a game that I would love to see get a Mass Effect kind of treatment would be F Zero. If yeah. you expand that into like a universe, of like going on races, doing bounty hunt missions, having a team and a crew together, like yeah. I think F Zero is could be that that game. As much as I want to go off road with this conversation, we are unfortunately <laughs> out of time for this week. Uh, but uh, Marshall, I guess to very to sum up the answer to your question, I think we're just banking on the Nintendo Switch's success to boost interest in the Metroid series and just hope that people being interested in Switch means they'll be interested in new Nintendo yeah. IPs. Smarten up, kids. <laughs> Play Metroid. <laughs> yes. So anyway, that is about all the time we have left for this week's NBC. Um, remember, you can always... Catch us every Thursday at 3 p.m. on IGN.com or your favorite podcasting platform. And if you're watching another platform, look out for us on those podcasting platforms where we are all the time. <laughs> Sorry. And if you want to submit your own questions, you can write to us at NBC at IGN.com or respond to our weekly question blog post on the Nintendo Voice Chat podcast forums on Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, NBC is the only place you can. Get the thing. Get the thing. Will me. The biggest gaming event of the year is IGN's Summer of Gaming, and it's almost here. Tune in beginning Thursday, June 4th to see the latest and greatest in game reveals, news, trailers, next-gen coverage, and more. And on June 5th, we kick off our first ever IGN Expo, where you'll get first looks at world premiere game trailers, exclusive game demos, and interviews you won't find anywhere else. IGN's Summer of Gaming, only on IGN and IGN One on your Samsung TV+.